welcome to this week's episode of our aviation marketing podcast, the best-selling aviation marketing podcast in aviation marketing podcast history, right? Right. Being the only one, we're, <laughs> we're doing all right, right? Which is cool. Um, actually, we're really happy that you joined us today. Uh, today, we're talking about uh, aviation promo videos for FBOs. Uh, last week, we talked about consultants and brokers and folks like that. And the week before that, we talked about uh, video marketing in general and why you should be doing it. And uh, so I would listen to those if you uh, have any doubts about the fact that you really should be doing <laughs> video marketing these days. Uh, it's what most of our customers are talking about for 2020, uh, more than any other topic, I think. We started at a high level general approach and we're rapidly digging down. Into Descending the into the weeds. <laughs> Right. No, actually, we're talking about some very specific tactics that you can use uh, as a uh, as different types of, of verticals. And today we're talking about FBOs and some specific ideas for FBOs. Which is what drilling down into the weeds is. Exactly. So a lot of folks uh, wanted us to, to do this because they're saying, you know, well, I don't really have any great ideas for my vertical. Uh, so we thought we'd, we'd share some, some thoughts. So this episode has been brought to you by our content marketing subscription service, where we do some form of content marketing for you each month, whether that is a uh, an article, a press release, a uh, video, of course, uh, a printed article, you know, anything along those lines. Those are the things that we do with our content marketing, and we want it to be flexible so that you can alternate a video every other month, a video every month, a very short micro video every week. Uh, you know, there's lots of ways that you can use the service to your advantage, depending on your particular situation, budget, and scenario, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, now the first misconception about video marketing is that you need a full video crew for everything you do. And especially for FBOs, because kind of the, the standard has been set by uh, Signature and some other folks who do these beautiful studio productions uh, of an airplane pulling in and the red carpet going out and the <laughs> fantastic lighting and the everybody has their hair and makeup perfect and it's all just this beautiful video. And there are reasons to do a beautiful, perfect video of your FBO. And, you know, if you're doing this in a particular time and place where you have a guaranteed audience and you have their attention for a certain amount of time, then it's certainly worth worth the money and worth the hassle and, and everything else to do a studio quality video. And we can do that for you as well. We'll um, arrange for the video crew and all the equipment and, and everything else to make that happen. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but what we're talking about today is not that. <laughs> okay. Uh, today we're talking about something we're calling real life quality. Uh, and we're talking about short or micro movies, so less than five minutes. Uh, generally speaking, sometimes we do as many as 10 or 15 if we go into to depth about a tour of your facility or something along those lines. But for the most part, this is real life. Um, just like we're shooting video here today, this is just our office. This is not a professional um, studio set uh, or anything along those lines. But the interesting thing is uh, sometimes this works better because it is more authentic. This is what people really want to see. Who are the real people I'm going to be doing business with? How do they really operate in real life? There are people that will look at one of those polished studio broadcast quads and say, well, anybody with enough money can do that. Mm -hmm. I want to know about what's really going on. Exactly. And um, something that's a little bit more authentic and specific and, and all of those things and not quite so stock footagey and, mm -hmm. and shiny. <clears throat> Okay. One thing that people say that work with FBOs is, you know, our competition is super high end. We're competing against those big FBOs. Uh, we have to look like that in order to attract high net worth and ultra high net worth people. And I can't afford a movie crew. A uh, couple of things. And uh, this comes from a couple of sources that are that we respect a lot. One is Lori White, uh, who does a blog on luxury marketing. And another is uh, Dan S. Kennedy, who wrote the book, so to speak, on marketing to the affluent. Uh, what do high net worth and ultra high net worth clients want? Uh, it's not necessarily the gold 
bathroom fixtures, <laughs> right? In fact, you know, it, there are a lot of myths about high net worth and ultra high net worth people. They are a lot more like, at least the ones that we've met and do business with, are a whole lot more like Warren Buffett than Kim Kardashian. Wouldn't you agree? I don't know about Kim Kardashian, but... They're not like Kim Kardashian. Oh, They're not a lot, like... Yeah, a yeah, whole okay. lot more like Warren Buffett, you know, drives the same car, lives in the same house, um, eats the same cereal as the rest of us. Okay, I versus, misunderstood what you said. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, versus Kim Kardashian, who, you know, is the Instagram star and... and glitz and glitter and... So right, on. exactly. Um, yeah, there are celebrities, and yes, there is a certain market for luxury, uh, which is real, uh, but... I think people overestimate the number of folks and the emphasis that they put on those luxurious details as opposed to the things that most high net worth and ultra high net worth clients actually want, which in our experience and uh, you know from those other sources, time, uh, savings and convenience and privacy and security, those are the top three and those can come in different orders, but they're always the top three. In fact, there was a book published some years back, mm -hmm. The Millionaire Next Door. Exactly. You never know. Right. Uh, so those are the things that, that they want. And if you think about it, if money was no object, what becomes the next limiting factor for you? What can you not get any more of? And that's time, right? Yeah, that's true. So, you know, just like everybody else, they want to spend their time doing what they want to do and less time doing the logistics of what they are doing. You know, and being an FBO, you are in the business of logistics. So the more you can save them time and give them convenience and give them privacy and security, the more they're going to like it. And they care less about, you know, okay, so those are the top three. And then four, five, six, and seven are kind of other things in various orders, right? And then luxury comes somewhere down on the list after a bunch of those other things, right? Yes. Okay. So... Don't worry too much about being perfect and luxurious and, you know, making those super polished videos because most people are looking for that. They're looking for, you know, what am I after? And if you're an FBO, it would be real and uh, emphasis on real customer mm -hmm. service. Exactly. Right. So three elements of a campaign, list, offer, and presentation, assuming that your list is some subset of high net worth and ultra high net worth individuals, people who do private travel, or people who are working for the industry that you support. So some FBOs are in fairly industrial areas and, you know, are serving a particular vertical. Uh, and, you know, what do you offer that is different from all the others in your area? And uh, how do you present that in the most conceivable possible way? So every video has to have three elements, a story, branding and a call to action so that they remember um, who you are, what it is that you, you are doing, and what you want them to do next as a result of that. And what Absolutely. you want them to do next is to switch their, um, <laughs> switch their arrangements to your FBO as opposed to the other, other one on the field. That's right. And that's another thing is a lot of times the people who are making the decision about which FBO to go to are not the high net worth and ultra high net worth people. They are the pilots who are repositioning the airplane, the dispatchers, the dispatchers, uh, the administrative assistants, the handlers, the security people uh, who are a lot less interested in luxury than they are in convenience for them and for their client because they know how their client gets when they get held up. Exactly. And they don't want to be on the bad end of that stick. Okay, so your FBO is not the Louvre. <laughs> right? But a guided tour can be really, really helpful. And one thing that we've told people to do in some cases, and this is really fairly raw or fairly real life, is to drive up to your FBO, have your passenger film, you know, this is what it looks like to drive up to your FBO, get out of the car, walk through the front door and introduce the people that they're going to meet and say, this is, you know, who's at the front desk. This is, these are the things that they handle for you. This, these are our line guys. These are the kinds of things that they handle for you, line guys and girls. Um, I use that term androgynously. Of course you do. And, uh, you know, these are our facilities. These are some of the things that you can do here. So that guided tour can be really low budget and still very effective. 
And you don't have to put the whole thing out in one piece. You can slice and dice and have just pieces and parts go wherever you want them. Right, exactly. So that uh, that guided tour is just kind of a an idea sparker for you uh, if you want to do the whole thing as a, a 15 minute um, video you can do that if you want to do it as a set of three minute videos you can do that too and just do here's the front office here's our uh, <laughs> here's our FBO here is the ramp and some of the uh, services we offer here here's our pilot lounge some of the services we offer here so that can be the whole thing mm -hmm. or it can be just a, a section at a time um, another really cool thing is maps so where are you located in relation to the things that your customers care about. And this is for the Guam FBO. A lot of people don't have a really good feel for where Guam is. You know, it's west of Hawaii somewhere. It's <laughs> out there in the ocean in a lot of water. So, you know, to put that in proportion, what is the flight time from the Pacific Rim places that people are usually coming from or going to? Um, you know, so it is the most convenient spot uh, in a lot of cases, between these Asian cities and the U.S. mainland. So it's a great place to do customs, great place to get fuel, great place to get your catering done and, you know, your line service and everything else, uh, especially if you're repositioning uh, between the Pacific Rim and, and the U.S. mainland. So uh, giving people a, an idea of how this fits helps them do the planning. And once again, you're talking to the dispatchers, you're talking to the security folks, you're talking to the logistics people uh, that work with the principal or the decision maker or the aircraft owner in a lot of these cases. So the maps really help them do that. Mm -hmm. um, you can do the origin story of your FBO. Uh, often these have really fascinating stories. You know, maybe it started as a an oil-filled service area or you know something along those lines or started for the golfers in you know on this particular British island or you know whatever just about every FBO has a fascinating story when you think about it and how that came to be and why it's positioned where it is and what their specialty is what it is so you know that's sometimes a fascinating story to tell mm -hmm. all right um, I'm gonna skip this for this purpose Okay. Um, line services, hangar, etc. You can go into detail about, you know, here's what our hangar looks like. Here are some of the available amenities. Um, you know, here are some of the places you can go. You want it to be clean. <laughs> you should take a look at the, the pictures in this video because that one is really nice. <laughs> it is really nice. That's a nice hangar. Very well lit. Um, a lot better than most we've seen. But yeah, I mean, if you have beautiful facilities, you want to show them off. And even if they are ordinary facilities and well positioned, they're worth showing off because people can see for real, this is what they're expecting to see when they get there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's fantastic. You also want to show off your facilities and amenities. So maybe you've got laundry, right? That's not glamorous, but it is very necessary in some laundry cases. Laundry facilities. Laundry facilities, exactly. Laundry. Everybody's got laundry. Well, okay, <laughs> laundry facilities or laundry service. Some Places have laundry service where you can drop off your bundles and get them back and things like that. Um, it doesn't have to be glamorous to be important uh, and for people to really see your uh, your facility as the yeah. place to go. I mean, you don't know what they're making decisions on. Sometimes that's it, right? Okay. Um, team member profiles. We talked about this uh, in last week's video when we were talking about uh, um, consultants, but... Your FBO has people in it, and those people have fascinating stories and fascinating hobbies. This is uh, Doug Reminger at, uh, at uh, Special Services Corporation, which is a fantastic FBO in the Southeast United States. And Doug, if you are ever at SSC or in, you know, flying through, uh, stopping in Greenville, South Carolina, um, ask Doug about his 1525th scale model aircraft <laughs> because I have never seen anything like this. These are amazing. Some people do the railroad tracks mm. with the scenes and the tracks and the clouds and the sky and the, you know, uh, what he's done here is some scenes with some World War I aircraft and, and, and World War II aircraft. And these are so small. You look at these compared to a coin or a key or a pen. Um, 
these are amazing. And uh, anyway, you never know what people do for fun or uh, for a hobby or anything else. And the people in your FBO are just as fascinating as the people in any other FBO. But if you can talk about them and if they are uh, you know, willing and able to uh, have relationships with the folks that come through the, the airport and you know, are open to that sort of thing, it is so neat to tell stories about people, right? Yep, absolutely. Okay. And uh, equally cool, or even slightly better from a marketing perspective, is happy customer stories, because your customers are fascinating. And some of them do want publicity. Uh, some of them don't want publicity, but you know, maybe willing to uh, do this in a limited sort of a way. But a lot of them, if you ask them, will do a happy customer video with you. And you know, just talk about what they like about your FBO, why they keep coming back, uh, you know, those kinds of things. All right, so this episode has been brought to you by Content Marketing. Um, people avoid advertising, but they seek out information. So this is kind of the difference between the studio produced videos versus the real life videos. These are information, um, not necessarily all glossy advertising. advertising. <laughs> and people, I think, have developed a filter for advertising. Mm -hmm. So if something is too glossy, it can actually turn them off. Um, that's why we, we like to do a lot of these real life videos and really transparent views inside our client companies. All right, so thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. See you next time.